Hi again, we have John Ford, who's a local celebrity here in Peekskill. He is the owner of Ford Piano, the legendary Ford Piano Company. And um, he's very much involved in the Martin Luther King commemoration dinner. He has a special um, tribute that he will be doing for Charlie Scott. And um, it will actually end up being a, sort of like a fundraiser within a fundraiser where, where there'll be music and there'll be music written by him and performed by local artists here. John, thank you for coming to the show. I know you're such a busy man. I was at your store yesterday. Um, I was sort of awestruck by the number of pianos in that particular place. It's, it's really awe-inspiring, and it's awe-inspiring that you take the time out of your busy schedule to be involved in this, 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 this event. We're all very busy, and you are too, and thank you for coming. My pleasure, Tony. Tell me about Charlie Scott and you, and why you're so passionate about being involved in this, on this committee this year. Well, Charlie Scott um, is a musician. Uh, he happened to pass away on Martin Luther King Day, doing a benefit to help another musician in distress across the street from where we are now in Peekskill at a club called The Twelve Grapes. Okay. He actually died on stage. Oh. Uh, but that's not why, uh, uh, only, that's not the only reason why the tie-in to Martin Luther King Day is there. Charlie was a special musician, mm -hmm. um, unlike any other really. Yeah. He was a teacher and he gave of himself to bring people together. For instance, every Wednesday for 20 some odd years, he played at the local Veterans Administration Hospital yeah. for free, of course, just because the folks there kind of needed him too. Yeah. And it gave them joy. Um, and Charlie was the kind of guy that what, what he would do in his off time, he would acquire instruments from various places, sometimes on the street, yeah. sometimes from people who just had them laying around. They were discarded and not in particularly good repair. And he would fix the instruments, make them playable, give them to children, and teach the children how to play them. And that's what Charlie did. Uh, I played with Charlie in the late 90s a lot and in the early 2000s. And he was a teacher. When, when you played with Charlie, he taught you without you knowing he was teaching you. Yeah. He was one of those special musicians. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he could have, he, he played, he played anything extraordinarily well. He was a natural mm -hmm. musician. He, what he, instrument did he play? What music? What instrument? Guitar. guitar. He played okay. guitar. So uh, I am building, through the auspices of Ford Piano Company, yeah. I'm building a little concert hall on the corner next mm -hmm. to my little piano factory. Yeah. And uh, part of that performance space uh, it, it is, it's, it is included a, um, a little music school. Uh, it's not, not for profit. It's, it's a 501c3. Mm -hmm. uh, we were going to, Charlie and I, was, Charlie was going to kind of head this with me. Mm -hmm. uh, we were going to teach kids in, yeah. in the area who are gifted, who may not have the wherewithal to mm -hmm. purchase an instrument or yeah. lessons. We were going to give them that. Okay. Uh, because Charlie and I both felt blessed that we had the opportunity to play. And to learn, yes. So now that Charlie is on another plane of existence, uh, I'm not going to let that stop me. Right. Uh, basically, what's happening is this. Um, Mrs. Reverend Phillips was kind enough to uh, invite me to do something in the beautiful Martin Luther King Day event that happens every year mm -hmm. at uh, Colonial Terrace. Mm -hmm. um, and I suggested that we bring Charlie into it. Um, he was a type of person who brought love out of people. And after all, Martin Luther King Jr. was all about love. Yes. And so um, there is a tie in there. And uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to, we're going to institute a citywide jam session that night after the Martin Luther King event in right. Charlie's name, mm -hmm. um, proceeds of which will go to buy an instrument for a kid within the Peekskill District who may not be able to afford one, but who really, really wants to play and who yeah. really has a kind of a spark to Passion play. Passion for it. We will present it to the kid on the day of the event in advance of the jam session in Charlie's name. Nice. And I'm also hoping that uh, after, if this 
is a success, like I think it will be, that um, we can institute it as an annual event. Oh. Not necessarily with Mrs. Phillips' preservation company mm -hmm. uh, event, but mm -hmm. just as a freestanding event uh, that evening. Right. Uh, so what's happening because Mrs. Uh, Reverend Phillips' uh, preservation company uh, charity is such a, uh, a wonderful it, uh, institution, I, I am getting many, many local musicians who are fairly well known around here yeah. to come and play oh, wow. uh, for the preservation company okay. uh, charity. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we, I'm going to be producing the music. Mm -hmm. I've written a little song for Charlie. Yeah, we just talked about that before we started the interview. Um, you told me that, um, and I'll share this with, with the audience, that you, sh you actually told me that, that you had a, a special uh, passion for the dream, you know, that you do actually um, hold the legacy and carry the legacy of Martin Luther King with you because of your experiences. I, I know you're so emotional. <laughs> you're tearing up on me again. You're always tearing up on me. I, I'm not really tearing up. <laughs> not it, really. It, it, I can't help it because it kind of gets me a little bit, uh -huh. this whole thing. Yeah. Uh, about how man can be so inhuman to his fellow man for, for, for I don't know why. I, I can never understand it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it has to do probably with my upbringing as a kid and yeah. uh, how I just experienced racism through my, a friend of mine when I was a small kid and yeah. I couldn't understand it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I still can't understand it really. Yeah. Uh, but uh, then when I went to high school, uh, I was an uh, acquaintance of mine was a, another older kid named mm -hmm. Andrew Goodman, mm -hmm. who was one of those kids who went down to Mississippi yeah. after somebody threw a bomb in a church mm -hmm. and killed three little girls. Yeah. So he was a kid with two other kids that I didn't know who went there to try to organize voters mm -hmm. to maybe change things a little bit. Turns out, I think through uh, you know, the evil wishes of a sheriff and uh, the Ku Klux Klan that Andrew Goodman was killed along with the two other kids. Yeah. And that was, I think, it was in 64. Yeah, it was a very sad story. They were coerced into their own death in thinking that they were being set free from jail and they were sent to their death, you know, just given the wrong directions. It's a very sad story. But I, I see that, that you do have a passion for human rights. And um, I think that that, that passion um, is really a strain that runs through this committee. And so I'm really happy that you're on the committee as well. So Charlie Scott, it's sort of um, um, interesting that he actually died on Martin Luther King's birth, uh, Martin, Luther, Martin Luther King Day. I never really was clear on whether that was his birthday or the day he died, but um, I think that your passion um, is appropriate, you know, for, for this committee. And the fact that we are honoring the arts and bringing the arts into this particular commemoration is also appropriate. And I think it's wonderful that you've written a song. You know, we have some original songs that'll be actually performed at this particular dinner, and yours will be one of them, which I've not heard yet. I won't ask you to sing it. <laughs> I'm not singing an acapella, Tony, sorry. <laughs> no. I want to clear the room oh, right now. Come on. But I need to have a piano, and I, I'll be all right with singing it. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I would to like that. to mention something now that you brought this up. Mm -hmm. To me, guys, men like Martin Luther King Jr., mm. Mahatma Gandhi, yeah. people like this yeah. used love mm. to conquer hate. They yeah. used good to conquer bad. And when you think about it, aren't we all products of love? We're all here because of love. Yes. We spend our life searching and needing love. Yeah. When we are done with this life, we go to a place where there's just love. Yeah. So it's all about love. And I think that uh, the love on the material plane is uh, visible through mm. sound and light. Mm -hmm. That's how I think the, the love is projected from yeah. the spiritual plane mm -hmm. to the material plane. Yeah. So I think what artists do, whether, whether we know it or not, mm -hmm. is we take this light and we take this sound mm -hmm. and we tweak it and rearrange it and offer it back. Yeah. Uh, and so if you look at it like that, then really every musician and artist mm -hmm. uh, is, it deals with love. Yeah. And Charlie especially because mm -hmm. um, he exuded it 
Yeah. From every pore in his body, you mm. could see it coming out of his eyeballs yeah. when you talked to him. Yeah. And when he played, mm -hmm. there, there was a certain calmness that that uh, ensued that was palpable that you could feel. Yeah. Um, and he was a, a special guy uh, in his approach to the music and the way he taught people. He had the patience of Job to teach people how to play music because it knew it, it, he knew it brought people together and he, he just loved it. Mm -hmm. So I'm feeling that it would be, it, it's, just, it's just very fortuitous that uh, Reverend Phillips asked me to uh, honor this, this man. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm hoping that it becomes a, uh, an annual event yeah. in, in, the, in the town of Peachtree. Yeah, you keep the passion going. Yeah, it's almost like I hear what you're saying. It's like it's a calling. You know, it's a calling, and he's an edu he was an educator as well, which I, you know, analogize to a calling, you know, that maybe someone in clergy would have. And um, I, I'm hoping that our audience will see that the passion that's actually running through this committee and, and definitely come to this dinner, you know, buy a ticket and come because there'll be such beautiful things happening. And I see peak skill as being, I guess, sort of like a, a stepping stone to, to bigger things when it comes to actually I guess healing our society. We do need the healing, and Martin Luther King knew that there was healing necessary here. We can do it through music and art. We can do it that way, you know? And um, thank you so much for, for being involved and sharing such an intimate story, you know? And, and I, I feel it too, I do. And I'm, I'm, I feel almost deprived not to have met the man. Uh, Charlie? Charlie or Martin Luther King, well, yes. Well, you, you did hear recordings. Yes. of Martin Luther King yes, Jr. Yes, that's true, and I'll hear recordings of Charlie Scott. Then I will say this, mm -hmm. when to, to, to have heard him mm -hmm. live yes. with thousands of people, mm -hmm. feeling their spirits uplifting, yes. and, and feeling chills mm -hmm. through your body when this man is talking and live, mm -hmm. was an honor that I will always carry with me. Yeah, you know, and so, you're uh, blessed, you're blessed. This little thing that we're doing for Charlie, uh, is just a small piece of uh, what I would like to term uh, getting back to the love that yeah. we're supposed to have in the first place yeah, for each other. Right. Mm -hmm. So thank yeah. you very much for having me, and yeah. it would be my pleasure to participate in this event for the Preservation Company, which is a beautiful, beautiful it is. entity. It is a beautiful entity, and we're all honored to be on it. And thank you, thank you so much, John. I appreciate, pleasure, your I appreciate your time. I appreciate your time. And you. thank you, everybody.